Let's now introduce the idea of independence within the context of probability theory. So you probably already have some um, idea of what independence means to you in many different contexts, right? So there's plain language, uh, other mathematical topics like linear algebra, but what I want you to remember here is that we need to throw away all of your intuition about independence and start over, just like we might have done with conditional probability. And that's because this concept is a bit uh, counterintuitive, and it's important to start with the definitions first. So with that in mind, two events, A and B, are independent if the probability of their intersection is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. This is the definition of independent. So if this definition is met, we will just say that two events are independent. And that has a lot of interesting implications, and we're going to see what those are. But for now, this is the main thing I want you to remember, that if you want to say two events are independent, you have to check this condition. Let's do an example. So in this example, we're just going to have a sample space with 0, 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to assign the probabilities directly. I'm going to say the probability of 0 is 2 ninths. The probability of 1 is 1 ninth. The probability of 2 is 4 ninths. And the probability of 3 is 2 ninths. OK? So I'm going to draw those out here. So here they are. They're just sitting in this box. And I'm going to have events A which is 0 and 1, so I'm going to circle those. That's event A. Event B, which is 2 and 3, I'm going to circle those. And finally, event C, which is 1 and 3, I'm going to circle those. My question is, are the events A and B independent? And the answer is no. Why is it no? Well, we're just going to first check the definition, and then we'll talk about why we could have guessed that from the outset. So the probability of A is 1 third because it's the sum of 2 ninths and 1 ninth. The probability of B is 2 thirds because it's the sum of 4 ninths and 2 ninths. The probability of A intersect B is 0 because they don't share anything in common, and therefore the probability of the intersection is not equal to the product of the probabilities because that's not equal to 0, and so then they are not independent. They are mutually exclusive because they don't overlap. And this is an important clue that independence is not the same thing as mutually exclusive. What about A and C? Are A and C independent? It turns out they are. OK, let's check that that's true. I've designed the example so it's true. Probability of C is 1 third. Probability of A intersect C, that only includes 1, so that's going to be 1 ninth. And if I look at the probability of A intersect C, that's 1 ninth. That's the same as multiplying a third by a third, which is the product of those probabilities. So it meets the definition and they are independent. And notice they are not mutually exclusive. They overlap. Okay? So that's an important thing to kind of keep in mind here, that if things don't overlap, usually they're not independent. And we'll see a little bit more about that now. Independence is not the same concept as mutual exclusive. We just saw that in our example. Specifically, if A and B are mutually exclusive, the probability of their intersection is the probability of the null set, which is 0. Therefore, they are only independent, according to our definition, if either A or B has probability 0. And this is not a very interesting scenario, because we're basically saying one or the other event does not occur ever. OK. so. Mutual exclusive is something that we can visualize easily in terms of overlap or not overlap. Independence is a little harder to visualize because um, the events that end up being independent tend to overlap, and it's really just a question of how their probabilities factor. But thinking about conditional probability lets us build up some intuition, OK? So let's assume that B has positive probability then the statement A and B are independent is equivalent to the statement that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. OK, and I need that probability of B is greater than 0 here in order for conditional probability to be defined. If, on the other hand, probability of A is greater than 0, I could also say that the condition A and B are independent is equivalent to the probability of B given A being equal to the probability of B. And intuitively, what this tells us is that if A and B are independent, then knowing 
that A occurs does not help us predict whether B occurs, okay? And vice versa, B doesn't help us predict A. And that is the definition of independence in probability. Does knowledge of one event help you determine anything about the other that you didn't already know? What about three or more events? So let's say I have A1, A2, up to AN. Those are mutually independent, and we usually just say independent, but sometimes you'll see this written as mutually independent. I'll almost always just say independent. So two conditions. One is all collections of n minus one events chosen from a1, a2 up to an, those have to be independent. And I add the condition that the probability of the intersection has to be equal to the product of the individual probabilities. Okay, this is a kind of a weird definition because it's recursive. And so when I'm looking at the n minus one events being independent, I have to reinvoke this definition and just keep going down until I get to a layer with just two events and I just see the products. Let's open this up for three events. You'll see what I mean. So let's say n is equal to three. All right. And so what this says is a1, a2, a3 are independent if a1 and a2 are independent. That means that the probability of their intersection is equal to the product of probability of a1 and a2. A1, A3 are independent, same thing. Probability of intersection A1, A3 is equal to probability of A1 times probability of A3. A2 and A3 are independent. Probability of A2 intersect A3 is equal to probability of A2 times probability of A3. And finally, probability of A1 intersect A2 intersect A3 is equal to probability of A1 times probability of A2 times probability of A3. That's a lot, right? So already at three events, I had four things to check, and that only gets bigger um, as I increase the number of events. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Let's do an example. Okay, what we're gonna do is flip a coin twice and just record what we see. So I could see heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. And we're gonna say that all outcomes are equally likely. So it's a fair coin. Here are the events that we're gonna care about. A is gonna be that the first flip is heads. So that means we could either see heads, heads, or heads, tails. B is that the second flip is heads. So we could see again, heads, heads, or in this time, tails, heads. And finally, C is the event that the first and second flips are different. That could be heads, tails, or tails, heads. All right, let's calculate their probabilities. A has probability a fourth plus a fourth. That's one half, because there are two outcomes equally likely. Same with B, fourth plus a fourth is a half. And same with C, a fourth plus a fourth is a half. All of them consist of just two outcomes that have equal likelihood, and so they're just a fourth plus a fourth, which is a half. A and uh, B have an intersection, which is just one outcome, heads, heads. So that has probability one fourth. A and C also have one intersection, that's heads, tails, probability one fourth. B and C have one thing in common, that's tails, heads, probability is one fourth. So I can see that probability of A intersect B is equal to probability of A times probability of B. So A and B are independent, right? A half times a half is a fourth. And we're just gonna see that a couple of times. So probability of A intersect C is the probability of A times C. We've checked that. So therefore A and C are independent. And finally, we see that probability of B intersect C that's a fourth is equal to probability of A, or sorry, probability of B times probability of C, a half times a half. So B and C are independent. But what if I look at the probability of A intersect B intersect C? Well, that's empty. Let's just take a moment and check that. So from A to B, the only thing in common is heads, heads, and heads, heads does not appear in C. So yes, it's empty, has probability zero, but that's not equal to the product of the individual probabilities which would be a half times a half times a half, one eighth. So those are not equal. And so I can say that A, B, and C are not independent. Intuitively, what this means is that any two events can be used to improve our prediction of the other event, okay? And let's just make sure that that's true. So let's say I tell you the first flip is heads. That doesn't tell you anything about the second flip, but if I tell you the first flip is heads and the second flip is heads, you know that the first and second flips are not different. That's the kind of thing that I mean. So A, B, and C are not independent when taken all together. 
Another concept you might see is that three or more events, a1, a2 up to an, are pairwise independent if for any pair that you choose, the probability of the intersection is equal to the product of the probabilities for that pair alone. Okay. In the pre previous example, that is what we had. A, B, and C were pairwise independent. And the intuition was that any one event does not help us predict any other event. But if you had two or more events, maybe it would help you predict. In general, independence can be really tedious to check. Even the last example, we had three things to check. It was pretty annoying. More often, what we're going to be doing is assuming independence as part of our modeling assumptions, and it's going to be something that we really believe is reasonable. So for example, in a communications channel, if we're facing noise, it makes sense to assume that the noise is going to be independent of anything that we transmit, right? So if I'm trying to send a text message to my friend, it's not like the noise in the environment um, knows what I'm trying to put in that message. Similarly, when I have component failures um, inside a vehicle, maybe those de components depend on each other and failures inside one car depend on each other, but across cars, probably the failures are independent. So two events, A, B, and C, are conditionally independent given C. So if I have A and B, they are conditionally independent given another event, C, if the probability of A intersect B given C is equal to probability of A given C times probability of B given C. Okay, so this is a new concept. So we talked about independence. This is conditional independence. So what's changed is I've just introduced conditioning on C in every term. Really important to remember that independence does not imply conditional independence. Conditional independence does not imply independence, okay? They're just different. The intuition is that given we know C occurs, A is not telling us anything additional about whether B occurs that we didn't already know from C, and B also tells us nothing interesting about A, right? So intuitively, if this technical condition holds, so the probability of B intersect C is greater than zero, A and B are conditionally independent given C. That idea is equivalent to saying the probability of A given B intersect C is equal to the probability of A given C. So the addition of the knowledge that B has occurred doesn't change anything, we might as well forget about it. You know, I could also say the probability of A intersect C is greater than zero as a technical condition, then this idea of conditional independence is going to become equal to the idea that probability of B given A intersect C is equal to probability of B given C. Okay, so again, independence is just our way of encoding this idea that two events don't tell you anything about each other, and conditional independence is a way of encoding how much additional information you get when you're given one event when you already know another event as your condition. Let's go back to our example. Same example, I'm going to look at the probability of A intersect B given C. So that, from the definition of conditional probability, I write down here. So I have probability of A intersect B intersect C over the probability of C. That's the definition of conditional probability. Well, we know that those events don't have anything that's shared across all of them. So the top is going to be the empty set. The bottom is still probability of C. This is going to be zero. You can also calculate probability of A given C. That's the probability of A intersect C divided by the probability of C. Again, definition of conditional probability. That's a fourth over a half. We're just using what we had from the last slide. So this is a half. Same for probability of B given C. Same calculation use the definition of conditional probability, and we're going to get a fourth over a half. That's going to be a half. And what we conclude from this is that the probability of A intersect B given C is not equal to probability of A given C times the probability of B given C. And so A and B are not conditionally independent given C. Okay. So with that in mind, what have we learned? Even though A and B are independent, they become conditionally dependent once I know C. Intuitively, knowing whether the flips differ, that lets us predict one flip using the other, right? So if I just tell you the first flip is heads, 
you have nothing to help you predict what the second flip is going to be. But if I first tell you the first and second flips are going to be different, now I tell you the first flip is heads, you know the second flip is going to be tails. So they became linked through this conditioning on C. All right, three or more events. We could also talk about conditional independence. I'll just tell you the definition. We won't open it up. So any collection of um, n minus one events, a1, a2, up to an, if that's conditionally independent given b, that's our recursive condition, and I also have this condition, the probability of the intersection given b is equal to the product of the probabilities given b. So this is the same kind of recursive definition we saw for independence. You could use it for a conditional independence. The last property I want you to remember is that independence is preserved under complements. Okay, this is very natural. So if a and b are independent, we automatically know that a and b complement, a complement and b, and a complement and b complement are independent. Right? Because if you know something occurs, you also know whether it does not occur. That's all that that's saying.